welcome, 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 welcome to 20 Minutes with Mike. I'm so pleased that you're joining me today. Got a great topic, and I think you're going to find this extremely interesting. So let's just get started. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Now, ponder that for just a moment. What would you actually do if you knew that you couldn't fail? Would you be doing what you're doing now? Or would you do something different? So the question that that I want to talk about today is not necessarily the topic of what you would actually do, but I want to talk about the things that get in our way. You know, the likelihood of success for most projects is directly proportional to your belief in it. You know, if you believe that you can build a, you know, seven-figure law firm, there's absolutely no reason why you can't. You you may wind up having, you know, the struggle. You may wind up having to sacrifice. You may wind up having to invest. But if you knew that you couldn't fail, would you do that? You know, if you went back in time and you knew that, uh, you know, Microsoft would do what it did, would you buy stock in it? Well, of course you would. But most of us didn't. You know, if you knew about Tesla when it first opened up, or if you knew about Bitcoin when it first came on the market and it was going for pennies on the, you know, for it was cheap. Even though we know that it, it's dipped, it was like sixty-two thousand dollars a coin, and now it's you know twenty or something along those lines. But would you have invested if you knew that you couldn't, um, you couldn't fail? What would you do? So what I want to talk about today is the things that get in our way, because for the most part, what gets in our way is ourselves. You know, it's it's what's going on between our two ears, uh, the things that get in our way and prevent us from succeeding in the way that we would like to, or maybe succeeding as quickly as we'd like to. So let, let's talk about a few of those things. What gets in our way? Well, probably the number one thing is fear, right? We're afraid. We're afraid of losing. You know, instead of focusing on how good it could be, often what we focus on is what would happen if we would lose, especially if it's an investment situation where you have to put time, effort, and or money into the project. The fear that you're going to lose that money. I mean, you know, right now we have a, a a fairly sizable portfolio it's you know compared to many it's it's minuscule but um certainly it, it's put us in a, in a fairly decent position and I, you know even as optimistic as i am i occasionally get caught up in this cycle of oh my goodness look at the stock market it's dropping we're going to lose all our money um, and I have to step back and and think to myself, okay, it's the ebb and flow of everything, and it will come back. Um, you know, but that's just an example of uh, fear, right? And and how many people invest based on fear or sell, you know, prematurely because they get afraid. So one of the biggest things um, that gets in our our way is fear. And, you know, what is, what is the word fear, um, uh, stand for? What was it false evidence appearing real? Okay. False evidence appearing real. Fear is a few is, is looking into the future and being afraid that something's going to occur that hasn't occurred yet. Now that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be wary um, of things that, and that you, you know, you shouldn't be smart about what you do. But how often do we do things be, because we're afraid? Because we're afraid of something that could happen in the future. You know, I have a bump on my arm. Oh my God, it could be cancer. You know, oh my God, I could be dying. 
Um, it could be, th that could be the, the case, but until you know, you know, how much energy do you want to put into all of that negative um, self-talk and thinking? I mean, sometimes the stress caused by the fear of what you're concerned is going to happen is way worse than the actual thing that occurs. So fear, you know, so what do we do about fear? Well, um, I think the, 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 the simple solution, uh, well, not solution, the, the simple thing to do is, is just take a breath and ask yourself, is this a, a probable future or is it only a possible future, right? I mean, and, and let's think about what's the difference. A probable future is what's likely to happen. A possible future opens that net up very wide and it can include virtually everything. And so, um, you know, uh, that planet gets hit by a meteor or there's a major earthquake or there's some, you know, you know, sun sunburst that, you know, causes all of us to go into the dark ages. Those are all possible um, uh, futures, right? And I guess on a long enough timeline, it's a probable future, but is it a probable future in the timeline in which we are going to be making decisions, you know, in our lifespan? So, you know, keep, when you're thinking about fear, you know, think about the difference between probable and possible. You know, I, I know people who get all caught up in the possible outcomes and that fear um, paralyzes them. And that's really what we're talking about. So to, to, to get back to where we started, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Well, you would be able to set aside that fear. If you knew, if you had the crystal ball and you knew, if I decide that I want to have a million dollar business or I want to retire at the age of 50 or, um, you know, whatever it is that you wanted to, to accomplish, you know, um, and you knew that you would accomplish it, would you actually try to do it? And then you have to ask yourself, okay, well, if the answer is, yeah, of course, I would I would try to accomplish great things. Then the question is, well, what's getting in your way? And what's getting in your way often is the fear of the possible outcome that it will fail, that you will embarrass yourself, that you will lose your money, that um, something bad will happen. I mean, you know, in, in my days of adventure racing, um, fear was a huge factor, but fear was part of the reason why I did it. If there was no fear, if it was certain that I was going to get to the finish line, if it was certain that I could, you know, accomplish it, then it wouldn't be actually accomplishing anything, right? It would just be, it'd just be a given. All right. What are other things that get in our ways? Well, doubt, right? Which is, which is the close cousin to fear, but it's a little bit different. Now, I, I think that there's two brands of doubt. There's your doubt. But I think what actually gets in the way of us more often is the doubt of our friends and family. Oh, you'll, you'll never be able to do that. You can't do that. Nobody can do that. You know, um, you, you know, you're dreaming too big, right? You know, you, you set up a plan. So let, let, let's just stay on this. I want to have a, a million dollar law firm. Okay. Um, and they're going, well, you know, last year you did 300 grand. Okay. So how are you going to triple that? more than triple that. You know, you can't do that. There's no way, right? That's your friends. And and that may be the little voice niggling in your head, but if you have, you know, a good mentor and you set up a plan and you you put your business um, you know, and you run it by data and you're, you know, you're moving it forward, it may not happen day 1. Um, matter of fact, probably it won't happen day 1, right? But you know that th there is a pathway to get there. So where's the doubt come from? Well, it comes from, you know, the 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 friends and the family who tell you that you can't do it, and you have to combat that, right? Um, why do why do people say that? Well, it may not be that they doubt it. It may be that they're actually afraid that you'll succeed, and it'll make them look bad because they failed to move forward, right? So when you're when you hear other, you know. Doubting Thomases, people who are telling you, you can't do that, that can't be done. Ask yourself, why are they saying that? 
Are they saying that because they really have your best interest in, in mind? Or are they saying that because they'd be really, really embarrassed if you were successful and they weren't? You know, um, just as an example, you know, my daughter has a, has a business um, and, uh, you know, I... You know, internally, I I have concerns about how she's running that business and and marketing it and, and that. But you know, I'm I'm never going to tell her that. I'm going to give her, you know, my best uh, positive suggestions. But I am never going to put doubtful energy into it because um, I want her to succeed, and she's not going to succeed if she's moving. You know, if she has doubt lingering. You know, doubt causes you to to pull back. You know, it, it a real good example, if you're a mountain biker or you're a skier, you're, you know, you do any kind of, you know, athletics, the worst thing that you can do on a mountain bike, if you're going, you know, over some rock outcropping or whatever, that's a little bit dicey. The worst thing that you can do is have doubt. You've got to go through with confidence because the bike wants to roll forward and you're much more likely to be successful. But, you know, when you pull back and you hit the brakes too, you know, prematurely and you go too slow or whatever, the, the odds of you crashing go way up. Same thing with skiing, you know, you've got to be, you know, um, you've got to go for it to a certain extent. And I, and I don't necessarily mean, you know, just reckless abandon, but you have to go forward with confidence. And doubt is the, the thing that is much more likely to cause you to get injured or to crash than um, anything else. So fear, we've already talked about. Doubt, we've talked about. What's another thing that gets in our way? Um, perfection. You know, the, the idea that I can't move forward till everything is perfect you know the the groundwork is completely laid and i know the answer to every potential problem it just doesn't happen you know in in this fast moving world and especially in the world of business or um in extreme sports or in uh, virtually anything you do parenting um you're not going to have the answer to every single problem first of all you're not going to know every problem. You're not going to even be able to anticipate every problem. So, you know, waiting till you have the answer to all your problems, um, that's not going to happen. You know, th there's an old saying of, of done, you know, done is better than perfect, right? Um, and there's a lot of truth to that. Now, that's not to say that you, you do a, a lousy job just to get it done, right? You want to do the best you can, but there comes a point in time where you have to say, look, I got to go forward even if I don't have everything in place. I mean, just a kind of a silly example, but there has been many times where I've taken off on a bike ride and realized, you know, I don't have a pump. I don't have any, I don't have a spare tire. Um, if I get a flat, I'm kind of hosed. Uh, but you know what? I just keep going and, you know, you, you hope for the best. And if you get a flat, well, then you figure it out. You hitchhike back or you walk back. And I've done that many times, but you know, the question is if I waited till I had everything in place for every single thing that I did, I'd be stuck in this office all the time. So perfection often gets in our way of, we've got to have the solution to everything. All right, what, what's another thing that gets in our way often? We have too much to do. In our own heads, we have too much to do. Now, what that generally means is that I've got all this busy work, you know, things like email. Oh my God, my, you know, I got to check my email before, you know, I could possibly do anything. Well, you know, I, I, if you've listened to any of these, you know, my opinion about email is email is no more important than anything else that goes on. And, it, you know, it is up to you to prioritize how important it is. I get so much email so much you know crappy worthless email that i never ever open um and i'm still working on you know a process to to get through it because every once in a while something comes up that is worthy of at least some attention and i want to look at it but busy work so how often do we get bogged down in the busy work you know that that 80 20 rule where 20% of what you do 
you know, produces 80% of your results, how often do you get bogged down in that 80% of just busy work, just doing stuff, but it's not producing any results. And that winds up eating all of our time. You, you, you know, the, your goal in life is to get rid of the 80% and spend all of your time on the 20%. That's where, that's where success is, right? Now, understand that that means that you'll say no to certain things, right? There will still be, so 80% of your results produce 20% or 80% uh, of your work produce 20% of your results. So if you got rid of all of that 80%, you would lose 20% of those results. Okay. But if you put, you know, all your effort into that 20% and pr which produces 80% of your results. And instead of, you know, only doing uh, two out of every 10 hours, you did eight of every 10 hours. Think of how much you would produce. So being too busy to solve the problem. Um, and there's a solution to that. And that is getting rid of all the junk in your, you know, or as much of the junk in your life as you possibly can, you know, get things down to the one thing. Now there's a great book on that called the one thing. And, and, and the, you know, the really quick 15 second version is do the most important thing first and then move on to the next thing. The one thing doesn't mean that you only have one thing in your life. The one thing means what is the single most important thing that I could do right now to move the ball forward and then do that. And then when that's complete, then move on to the next most important thing that you could do. So, and, and I can tell you without a doubt, looking at your email is never going to be the one important thing. Um, you know, scroll through Facebook is never going to be the one important thing. That doesn't mean that you never look at email or go to Facebook or, or any of those things. Um, what that means is that you focus on the things that's most important. And then when you have time at the end, you can, you know, scroll through Facebook or check your email or, or do those things. I'm not saying they have no importance. I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's always a matter of pride, uh, pro, uh, prioritizing. All right. And then what's the final thing that that gets in, in people way? And, and I, I'm sure there's a much longer list, but um, I'm down to two minutes. Uh, and that is that you just don't know what to do. You're paralyzed because you don't know the next step. And this is where, you know, mentors and teachers um, can be absolutely huge. And, you know, you don't know what the one thing is. You don't know what the single most important thing is. And so having someone show you, walk you through the process, you know, give you ideas, suggest, make suggestions, you know, as I often say, and I, I stole this from Dennis Morton, uh, who's a Peloton instructor, you know, I make suggestions, you make decisions, but um, having someone who makes good suggestions to you, things that you hadn't necessarily thought of. When I work with my clients, um, you know, trying to, to help them uh, get their businesses in order, you know, I come in without any of the emotional baggage. I come in, you know, objectively, and I start to look at the health of their firm and what they're doing. And nine times out of 10, probably 99 times out of 100, there's some really obvious things that they can do to fix uh, or make massive improvements that are really simple that they just haven't seen because they're too close to it. Um, so for example, I had, I had a client, uh, just the other day and, and we were going over his, uh, bookkeeping and how that was going. And, um, because that's really important. You want to know how your business is doing at any given time. And I, and I asked him, I said, well, you know, how current is your, your, uh, your, your bookkeeping, how current is your P and L your profit and loss statement? Uh, and he, it was like two months old. And I'm like, that, that, that just can't work. You've got to have it current. It needs to be current. Like you know, at least on a weekly basis so that you always know where you are. Okay. So what, what's the, what's the, the gist of this um, or the, the, the point of this is that if you ask yourself, what would I do if I knew I wouldn't fail and you, you know, latch on to that idea, this is what I want to accomplish. Okay. And then there goes the 20 minutes. So I'm going to, I'm going to wrap this up real quick. If you ask yourself, what would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? 
And then you latched yourself onto that goal and said, that's what I want to accomplish. Then you start going through, what are the things that are actually getting in my way that if I got rid of, the odds of me succeeding would go up dramatically? You know, how much, how much of this is being hampered by fear? How much of it is being hampered by doubt, either my own personal doubt or family, friends, colleagues who, you know, are, are suggesting that you can't succeed? How much um, of the problem is that I'm trying to have everything be perfect before I move forward? How much of the problem is that I just have too much to do and I haven't carved out the space to give me the opportunity to actually do that thing? And how much of it is that I just don't know what to do? Um, and when you, you know, when you look at all of those, uh, when you drag them out into the light, you know, they lurk under the bed and they're all scary, but when you drag them out in the light and you really look at them, most of the time you can get past the fear, you can get past the doubt, um, you can step over the perfectionist and go, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to go forward and, and we'll just, you know, do the best we can and then we'll fix it. Um, how much of it is, is there just too much to do? And we're going to just start carving time out. You know, there are plenty of hours in the day. And then how much of it is, I just don't know what to do. And then you invest in um, someone, either time, money, or resources in someone to actually help you move forward. All right, everybody. I hope you find this helpful. Um, we are often the biggest uh obstacle in uh in our own lives we get in our own way and nine times out of ten if we can just get out of our way get out of our own way um the ability to be successful will go up exponentially all right everybody i hope you have a great week and just remember be grateful for what you have but be willing to work for what you want all right everybody y'all take care